Good evening, everybody. Welcome to round four of our 1991 F1 season coming to you from the Principality of Monaco. I am Jason White. I'll be your play-by-play -play announcer this evening, probably working solo. So if I manage to uh, miss uh, some of the action on track, I apologize for that. But uh, that's what we're... Uh, those are the cards we are dealt this evening, so we'll play them as we can. Uh, anyway, happy Easter to everyone watching and competing today. Uh, our drivers are on their uh, very crucial warm-up session now. They're uh, getting used to the heavier fuel tanks and their tire selection, so let me run down the top 10 from qualifying as time expired. It was an eventful qualifying session. In some ways, not the kind of events that certain people would want, but uh, in the end, it should be an interesting start. In uh, first position is Grant Ridal in his Dallara uh, with a time of 1 minute 19.625. In second is Ray Ridal. So it's a family affair at the front of this uh, race. Two tenths back in second place. In third is Richard Cox. In fourth, Cesario Slipinski. Fifth, Anders Nelson. Sixth, Yuha Boss. Seventh, John Team. Eighth, Giovanni Santarami. Ninth, Nicholas Kirsten. And tenth, David Sabre. Those are the top ten going into today's race after qualifying session the qualifying session. We don't have multiple ones like in real life because we just don't have the time. But, you know. So here we are at the Grand Prix of Monaco, easily the most prestigious race on the Formula One calendar. On the one hand, you've got the money, the casinos, the yachts, the movie stars, the jet set, all of the things that make this event so attractive in real life. On the other hand, you have quite possibly the most challenging street circuit in the world. Maybe Macau uh, comes close, but... Uh, the Grand Prix circuit first raced here way back in 1929, and the circuit has seen a few changes over the years, most notably the swimming pool section, which was added in 1973, and the Nouvelle Chicane, which was added to corral the speeds of the cars exiting the tunnel. But by and large, this is the same circuit uh, and has re retained much of its character, which is that of a very tight and twisting track with zero margin for error, and I mean zero. To win here, you need a razor-sharp uh, sense of precision, and you have to have complete, unwavering, total concentration. If either of these lapses for a split second you're into the Armco and out of the race. And that we, uh, well, you can't see it now, but there's people experiencing that on track right now. Um, the other thing about this race that makes it unique, and this is a, this is the, this is a, a thing you could say about a lot of street circuits, but Monaco definitely, um, it has the effect of kind of equalizing the field because in a lot of ways, it's driver's skill uh, that determines who wins the race rather than the car capabilities because the capabilities of the car is clearly out uh, pace what we can do on this circuit. They can't reach their top speeds. They can't necessarily corner the way they would on some circuits. So it's very possible that we'll see people in cars that just couldn't do well at Imola or Interlagos suddenly doing well here. Uh, but we'll see how that unfolds. We go for uh, 78 grueling laps today. That's a lot of laps on a circuit like this where, where you have absolutely no minute to rest. No second. You're just going, going, going constantly. So, let's take a look at the point standings going into today's race, and it's a very interesting situation so far. As you can see at the top of the chart, Anders Nilsson and Ray Ridal are tied with 20 points apiece. In third place is Richard Coxon with 13 points. Fourth is Giovanni Centurami with six, and then Cesario Slipinski is fifth with four points. In the constructor situation, it's also pretty tight at the top. Uh, team 7-Up Jordan is in the lead with 22 points. One point back is Cannon Williams' team. Uh, in third, Braun Tyrrell Honda with 16 points. Fourth is Scuderia Italia with 6 points. And then you have Minardi with 5 points. So, very early days still, granted, but uh, 
It's a pretty tight point situation. It'll make uh, today even more interesting. So let's go to the track now and see if we can find somebody who can take us around and show us this uh, circuit. Okay, here's uh, Robin DeVos. He's about to complete a lap, so we can go for a run with him and see how it goes. Okay, I, oh, no, he's going to the pits. So let's see if we can find anybody here. Ooh, a bit of a, <laughs> a, bit of a uh, problem here at the Nouvelle Chicane. Jonathan Asterklinth and uh, Francisco Amaral trying to see how they're going to get out of this one. But uh, let's see, who else is close to ending a uh, lap here? That was Janik. He's already gone through. Let's see if I can find... I want to find somebody who's almost every... Okay, here we go. Here's John Team. And let me guess, going to the pits. No, actually, it's not. Okay, good. All right, so John Team now heads down the main straight here. It's a little bit of a curved straight. Royal box on the left. Uh, downshifting now for Sandovat, a very tricky right-hander. Named Sandovat because there's a church just off to the left. Now we're heading up the Beau Rivage to where all the shops are, the very expensive shops, Hermes, Louis Vuitton. Now we head back to the left, and now it's the right here at Casino Square. Heading downhill, this is much more dramatically downhill than you would think, into the Mirabeau. From the Mirabeau, you accelerate further downhill into the iconic Lowe's hairpin in this case. It's called the station hairpin, the Lowe's hairpin. I'm not sure what its name is right now, but then another right at Poitiers here. And now the next right turn that leads you into the tunnel. One of the faster parts of the circuit, but uh, tricky. You have to take the exact right line through it to get through uh, very fast. Now downshifting for the Nouvelle Chicane. Left, right, left back to this short straight that leads you to the tobacconist turn right here. And now this is a swimming pool section here. Very quick entry, left, right, and then a little bit slower of an exit. Right, left. Heading now behind the pits uh, along the docks here. And we, now we turn into La Rascasse, the restaurant on the right. Heading up now to Anthony Nose, which is the last turn in the corner, or on the course, sorry. And now heading down the main straight. And that's one lap of Monaco. Let's go for one more lap. Heading into Sandavat. Now up hill. This is a very difficult area here in terms of if you want to pass somebody, it's nearly impossible. Best to just follow someone. Now downshifting for the Casino Square area. Here it is. Heading downhill now towards Mirabeau. And you can see there are some runoff areas here. Some sections where you can... Uh, if you realize you're not going to make the corner, you could go off into a runoff area, but there aren't very many of those. There's one at Sandavat, there's one at, Le, at the Mirabeau, but that's about it. Uh, now heading into the tunnel, turning right here. This tunnel used to be a lot smaller uh, prior to the expansion of the hotel above. Now heading downhill into the Nouvelle Chicane. There's another runoff area right there, so there's about three runoff areas I can. I think... Uh, John might have clipped a barrier there. Get a good view of the uh, city as you're heading here into Tobacconist, but I'm sure that's not what John's looking at. He's focused on the swimming pool section right now. Right, left, and now this very, very short straight that'll take you to La Rascas. Turning right twice here. Oops, somebody lost a wing. <laughs> and I believe John's going to the pits. Yeah, he is now heading into the pits. David Saber just ahead of him. So that's a couple laps right there of uh, the Monaco circuit, a classic a circuit that uh, has thrown up some very unusual results, mainly because of its uh, layout. I get to think of some very unusual ones, like during the rain, Jean-Pierre Beltois won for uh, BRM. If I'm not mistaken, that was BRM's last victory. Uh, Olivier Panis basically outlasting everyone here to win in 1996. Uh, the 1991 race actually was in, was unusual in the sense that uh, there was a Tyrrell on the front row in the hands of uh, Stefano Modena, and he did really well. He was in second uh, in the race until his engine blew in the tunnel, and that also took out Ricardo Patrese with the oil on the circuit. So there you go. That's uh, I mean, it's a very, very interesting circuit full of 
quirks and uh, challenges, and I bet we're going to have a really good race today. So, qualifying report while we have the time here. Let's take a look at how much time we have left, actually. Four minutes, 38 seconds. Okay. So, qualifying itself was very eventful. Uh, right out of the gate, Grant Rudolph came out and hit a uh, 119.745. That was with about four minutes into the session. So, he was, he was really quick right out of the gate. Uh, and it was not the greatest of qualifying sessions for Richard Coxon early on. He was P2 for quite a while with 120.068, but in a couple of instances he was trying to advance his position and it didn't go too well. With 50 minutes left, he crashed at the uh, swimming pool, and then later on he was trying to improve his time again. At that time he went down the escape road at the Mirabeau, so uh, Coxon was finding it difficult to go further up the chart to P1. Meanwhile, Grant Riddell up the ante, uh, well, actually, that happens later on. Uh, one thing that was interesting, Grant Rudall was trying to advance his position in his Delara, make P1 even harder to get at, but then he ran into the back of a Modena at the swimming pool. So that just illustrates how it's very, very hard to get a clean lap at, at uh, Monaco. D drivers can try like mad to get out of the way for you, but, but they cannot just vaporize. There's a solid car there, so that can really cause issues uh, if you're trying to set a clean qualifying lap. I noticed many drivers during the qualifying session driving very slowly, trying to back time their lap so that they wouldn't run into somebody they saw on the chart, on, on the little uh, map of the track, the dots going around. So sometimes you just, it, it, at, you know, best laid plans, you just can't get it done. In any case, um, Ray Rudolph then started to uh, assert himself. Uh, he got, got up to P2 with a time of 119.875. That was with 21 minutes left. And then, here's the part where Grant Rudall advanced himself even further in P1, 11965, and that was his full 10 laps used up, so he was done. But that was uh, good enough to get him the pole position with that time, 1 minute 19.625. And then Schlepinski, uh, who had, had a great run last uh, time out at Imola, he asserted himself with a P4 time of 120.184, with nine minutes to go. So, I would... I would say that Schlepinski is probably a sleeper in this race. I think he probably could do extremely well, uh, given the grunt of that Ferrari engine that he has behind him. Uh, Coxon uh, again tried to uh, further his position. He was P3 at the time and crashed in the final turn with three minutes to go. And, and Ray Rudall in the uh, Williams, who we're watching right now, he tried, made a last-ditch attempt to get the pole he was in P2 with zero minutes to go, and he catches the wall in the last turn. So that was the qualifying uh, there. We're going to have to wait and see uh, who the DNQs are, because there seems to be a bit of confusion, at least from my side, as to who DNQ'd, because uh, Rob DeVries, according to qualifying, was disqualified while he was P28 because he went 13 laps instead of 12. You're only allowed 12 qualifying laps, period. So we'll have to see what that does to the, to the qualifying order once we run through the uh, grid. All right, so let's take a look at what is coming up at ISO in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, we have a bit of a lull here. Uh, April 14th is the next race for this series, the Molson Grand Prix du Canada on the famous uh, Gilles Villeneuve circuit uh, in St. Lawrence Seaway in Montreal. Sunday, April 14th, green light will be at 2000 CEST. And then, later on, we have another DHL International Race Day. This time, I believe, I actually forget where this one is. I'm, I apologize. Anyway, that is the date of the race. Uh, it's round five of 13. Sunday, April 21st, race one starts at 2000 CEST. So that's what's coming up. Trivia question for you to ponder. Uh, who was the first French driver to win the Grand Prix Monaco? Is it A, Guy Moll, B, Jean-Pierre Beltoise, or is it C, René Dreyfus? We'll have the answer later on in the broadcast. All right, so 10 seconds to go. We're about ready to go to grid here. Good timing. If I were picking someone to win today, it would probably be... Uh, 
uh, Schlepinski. I, I, I'm going to pick him as a dark horse because of his skill, and I think he's in this. That's what, what's going to carry him forward instead of his car. I'm thinking. For some reason, I have a premonition. I hope I'm wrong that there's going to be difficulty with for Grant. But uh, I don't know. Ray may score another win here. Uh, Nilsson didn't figure too prominently in qualifying, but we'll see what happens there. So as soon as we click over to the uh, race session here, we'll have a look at the grid, and we'll go from there. But thank you very much for joining us on YouTube. Sorry for the slight delay uh, getting on the air, but uh, all is well, and we're ready to go. There's that telltale siren. 78 laps on the board. Good. Right with all P1. So we're waiting for him to come to the grid. He's probably going to wait until the very last minute. Car notes uh, from Coxon here. Tires, expect anything all the way from super softs to hards. Goodyear's will probably use softs. Pirelli's probably will use mediums. That figures into what our pole sitter will be doing. Uh, but I wouldn't, but Coxon would not be surprised to see some Goodyear cars on super softs and Pirellis on hards. Brakes shouldn't be a big issue here. Uh, engine temperatures will be a factor uh, because of the constant shifting and trying to extract the most from each gear. Uh, fuel, the cars will be running much less fuel than they normally would be. Uh, 157 liters for this race as opposed to like the, like about. 195 for another tech race you know, on a regular circuit. The only changes to cars in this race is Benetton. They have a revised radiator location. The rest of the cars remain the same as before, uh, including engine power. So, here we go. On the pole for the Monaco Grand Prix is Grant Rudall and his Delara Judd. In second is Ray Rudall. Williams, Renault, FW, 14. He currently is tied at the top of the points chart with Nilsson. In second, or I'm sorry, third place, uh, Richard Coxon, Tyrrell, Honda, 020. Hopefully his race will go better than qualifying did. Uh, Schlepinski starts fourth in a minority Ferrari. Fifth, Anders Nilsson, Jordan Ford. Sixth, Juha Boss, Benetton Ford. Seventh, John Team, Late Now, Ilmore. Eighth, Giovanni Cinturami, Delar Judd. Ninth, Nicholas Kirsten, Larus Ford. Tenth, David Saber, the first of the Ferraris. Eleventh, Lewis Wedding making his ISO debut in a Brabham Yamaha BT60Y. Twelfth, Brian Janik, Lotus Judd. Thirteenth, Jules Bouchard, Lotus Ford. Or, I'm sorry, not Lotus Ford, Jordan Ford. Fourteenth, uh, Luke Rosella, Footwork Porsche. Fifteenth, Robin DeVos, Lotus Judd. Sixteenth, Oscar Team, Leighton House Silmore. Seventeenth, Gabriel Del Piccolo. AGS Ford, JH25. 18th, Mike Olson, McLaren Honda. He's, that's a guest drive. Uh, 19th, Luciano Rocha in the other Ferrari. 20th is Peter Hlavich in the other Footwear Porsche. Uh, 21st, Jonathan Atzerklid makes it onto the grid in the lowly uh, uh, Coloni Ford C4. And 21st, that's pretty good for that car. Uh, 22nd, Dave Miller making a guest appearance in a Ligier Lamborghini. 23rd, Bruno Chacon, Benetton Ford. 24th, Francisco Amaral, McLaren Honda. 25th, K.O. McKeels in the fundamental Fomat 1. And rounding out the field is Gilles Toe in a Mona Lamborghini 291 with those very interesting side pods. So that's your 26 car grid. So DNQs for this race, Rob DeVries, I guess because he did, he went over the number of uh, qualifying laps, uh, but also because he wasn't fast enough to make the 26 car grid. Simon Watman, John Clark, and Matt Sibignani also DNQ for this race. So the cars are now filing onto the grid. And very shortly, we'll be getting a green light here to start the Monaco Grand Prix. Tense moments here because you want to have a good start, but you also don't want to get into a big uh, melee at uh, Sandovot, which is not very far away from the start. We've seen pileups there before. We've seen people overly eager at that part of the circuit. Hopefully it won't happen this time. There is the start flicker. Stand by for the start of the Monaco Grand Prix. 
And the race is underway! Crandall gets away really well. But it looks like, oh my goodness, it looks like uh, we have a bit of a holdup here by his dad. Cars trying to get through here without any kind of contact. So far, everyone looks okay. Yes, everybody got through without any problem. Looking now as they come up the um, Beau Rivage section, everybody looks like they're where they need to be. Oh, there's a tire! There's a tire right there. I wonder whose that is. Somebody has lost a wheel. We'll find out at some point who it is. Here we are in the uh, classic Lowe's hairpin. Everybody seems to be getting through okay. Grant Riddall in first, Ray Riddall second. Schlepinski is up to third place, so he advances one spot. Coxon down to fourth. Yuha Boss is fifth. Anders Nielsen sixth. John Team is in seventh place, and there's your answer right there. Oscar Team's the one who lost the wheel, so he's effectively out of the race. So Grant is, uh, he had a very, very good start. It looked as if uh, there was a bit of a holdup, uh, or not as quick a getaway by his uh, dad. But in any case, Ray is in second. You've seen there, Slipinski in third is very interesting. We'll see how that plays out. Cars going through the swimming pool section now. So as far as I can tell, only one retirement so far, that being Oscar team. All 20, all, the rest of the 25 cars seem to be in good trim. I don't see any parts and pieces missing. So we'll keep an eye on that. Here comes Grant back down to the Sandovot turn again. Everyone being very careful here to take care of the car and not have any problems early on because this is a long race, but also, really, the guy who wins here isn't going to be the guy that doesn't make mistakes. If you can make zero mistakes, you've got an excellent shot because it will be a high attrition race. No, there's no question about that. Here we are, back to the Lowe's hairpin once again. Boss now working on the back of uh, Richard Coxon as they head through here. It's so tempting to shoot down the inside of somebody there, but sometimes it just isn't going to work, so. And the cars are heading through. That's, uh, ooh, Grant has a bit of a dif difficulty there getting through the Nouvelle Chicane, but he's all right. Uh, that's one place that can be kind of kind of difficult for even the best drivers to get right. You have to slow it down, and it's so tempting to come through there and have too much steam and just blow the chicane. It's so easy to do. So, I would be surprised if we see that a few times during this race, but uh, look at all these guys getting after it. The Harper off to the right here. Is Grant back to uh, Sandovot again. So let's have a look here from the cockpit of Ray Radal as they go up the hill here. He's. Oh, and Francisco Amaral's out of the race. That's unfortunate. Grant Radal leading Ray by just about 1.7 seconds. So he's not getting away too much here. Let's look backwards here. And there you can see Schlipinski and the rest of the cars emerging behind him. So, you'll be interested to see how much uh, Ray can maintain this gap or if he's going to be falling back into the clutches of these other cars. Again, so much of this race is going to be about driver's skill as opposed to the car itself. That's certainly what we saw in qualifying. There were some people who just had a handle on this course like others did not. I mean, they were just weaving through these Armco barriers like it was nothing. And then there were other people who were very, very reticent to come close to them. But that's how you're fast around Monaco, is you have to be willing to drive on the edge with the car as close to the barriers as you can. It's a that is the fast way around the circuit. It is also, unfortunately, the most dangerous way around the circuit. So, but here, now you can see Schlepinski is reeling in uh, Ray visibly. For those of you who joined us late, let's uh, look again at the uh, driver's points. I mentioned that Anders Nilsson and Ray Rodal are tied at the top. Anders driving the uh, Jordan and Ray Rodal, as you saw on the screen, they're driving the Williams. So, something to keep in mind. And Slipinski also has put some distance between himself and Coxon, so I think Slipinski is in excellent shape here. 
and uh, Coxon falling back to uh, fourth, but he's holding it well. It doesn't seem to be losing too much ground. Uh. Oh, and here's an excellent battle right here between Nicholas Kirsten, who's in seventh, which is uh, excellent for him in this car. And he's got Giovanni Centorami right behind him, and then right in front of him, Kirsten, I mean, is uh, John Team. So it's a lot more uh, close quarters battle back here right now. It's kind of spread out a little bit at the front. Only two cars out of the race so far, Francisco Amaral and Oscar Team. Yes, a happy Easter to everybody. Let's look further back in the field here. What else is going on? Here is uh, Luke Rizzello. I think he might have glanced the barrier there, but he was uh, he provided a lot of fireworks in the last race at uh, Imola. And here he is again in his footwork Porsche trying to find a way around Jules Bouchard. And there's a lot of cars. There's a gaggle of cars behind him here. Uh, Janik, Yuha Boss, and Louis Wedding, followed by Luciano Rosa. So it is very tense back here. Here comes uh, Yuha trying to find a way past Brian, but he's not going to find any space out there. Not on the outside at, uh, at San Nevada. I don't think that's a good idea. But here he is now. He's really trying to get by him here. He's even tried to do it on the Beau Rivage section, which is not a good idea. It's very, it's really, there's only, only one line through there. And it looks as if uh, Brian might be holding up uh, Yuha just a tiny bit here. To head into the uh, Lowe's hairpin. Look back now from Brian's car. But Yuha looks pretty racy right now. The uh, order at the front is the same. Uh, Grant Riddall is in first, Ray is in second, Chlepinski third, R Richard Coxon in fourth, Anders Nilsson fifth, John Team is sixth, Nicholas Kirsten seventh, Centurami eighth, David Saber ninth, Jules Bouchard is tenth, Luke Rosella eleventh. And we're watching the battle right now between Yuha Boss and Brian Janik. This is a battle for 12th place right now. But again, there's going to be huge attrition in this race. Usually, whoa! Yuha comes very, very close to touching if he didn't touch uh, Brian's uh, right rear tire there. But uh, this race is notorious for uh, its uh, attrition rate. People losing concentration and crashing, so, uh, and engines failing, so. That is definitely going to be one of the stories of the day, no question. And if you're at the back, your key to getting to the front is to take as good a carrier's car as you possibly can in addition to driving well. All right. Yeah, very busy here in this part of the circuit. Let's take a look further forward here. There's Luke Rosella still trying to work on uh, Jules Bouchard, but Jules has got a pretty good... Oh, my goodness, there's Brian tapping the back end of Rosella. Now they're heading into the tunnel. Now it's the new Velvet Chicane. I'm not a fan of this new Velvet Chicane. I got Whoa, whoa! There was David Saber taking a wild ride. Uh, let's have a look at that again in replay. Uh, he, he really cloppered those curbs. Watch this. Boom! <laughs> oh, shoot. He was very lucky not to catch the tires on the right there, or on the left. Anyway. Kirsten's down to seventh, actually. Centurami up uh, uh, to eighth. Centurami and up to seventh, so that's an advance in position. Team sixth. Nilsson now is right at the back of Coxon. This should be interesting. Nilsson in the green Jordan Ford following the black and white uh, Braun Tyrrell Honda of uh, Richard Coxon. Heading down to the Mirabeau. Yeah, the, it, these cars are actually getting uh, closer together now here. If you look ahead, you can see Ray Riddall. So this is a four-car freight train pretty much at this point. So it's going to be interesting to see how this pans out. Going into the tunnel now, it looks like these cars have a bit, of, bit more legs on them than uh, Anders' car does. He might have set his up for a little bit more grip. Only he really knows the answer to that. Now to the Nouvelle Chicane. Left, right, left. 
Anders has got a nice little uh, red light there on his uh, dashboard that can tell him uh, when he needs to shift, absolutely, which is nice to have. Because if any of you have played uh, Automobilista, you know that there's an indicator, but it's down towards the lower right, so you have to use your peripheral to see it. But if that's right up in, in front of you there, it's a lot easier to see. Now on to the main straight. They'll be starting lap number eight out of 78. Hard to believe we're already a tenth of the way through the race. Down, downshifting for the Sandovat corner, which we've seen so many crazy instances of uh, collision at, at Sandovat in real life. Uh, one of them that comes to mind is Derek Daly cartwheeling over people in 1980. Uh, I think there was a spectacular accident there once with Patrese with fireball and everything complete. So, in any case, once again coming down to the Lowe's hairpin, but you can see how close this group is together. It's, it's a really close group. Yeah, Ray is basically being hounded now by Schlepinski. He has, uh, he's got about eight second gap, so it appears that Ray might have made a mistake at some point, because he's now behind uh, Grant by eight seconds. So it's possible that he had just a bit of a, uh, not an off-track excursion, but some kind of just something that slowed him down, made a slight error. In any case, he's still in second, but now he's got three cars breathing down his neck, so that's going to make it a lot more stressful for him. And uh, Ray's a pretty cool customer, but uh, anytime you have people constantly at the back of you, you're, you're looking in your mirrors as much as you're looking forward, that can distract you, and distractions can lead to accidents which we don't want to see people have, but uh, historically that's what happens here. Yeah, I think the uh, Renault V10 is really helping uh, Ray stay ahead. Schlepinski, though, driving last year's... Uh, we got actually a lot of interesting engines in this group here. Four different engines, four different cars. You got Ray in the, Win in the Williams Renault FW14. That Renault engine is a V10. You got Schlepinski driving a Minardi with last year's spec Ferrari engine in it. Further back is Coxon in the previous year's Honda V10, the, the engine that was used by McLaren in 1990. And then you have the uh, Jordan Ford that Nilsson's driving with the Ford HB V8, which is a great engine, also used by uh, the Benetton team. Into the tunnel. And out. Yeah, I think Ray is controlling this situation with just the horsepower of that V10. It's, and the, the handling of the Williams must be excellent. I remember uh, Nigel Mansell talking about the uh, the Williams at one time. He says, you could put a puppet in this car and it would win. That, that's how much he thought it was superior. All right, so things looking about status quo here for the moment. Let's have a look back. Uh, John Team is trying to defend himself against Giovanni Santarami, who's been moving up through the field. Giovanni in the second of the two uh, Delara entries, and John Team in the first of the uh, Leighton House entries. It used to be called March, but uh, in this particular year they were known as the Leighton House team, similar to how the Footwork team used to be Arabs. Heading up the hill now. Casino Square. And then the long, this really steep downhill run to uh, all the way to the uh, station hairpin or the Lowe's hairpin. And John seems to be doing a good job of holding off, uh, holding off Centurami at the moment. And it's still the same at the front here, although uh, Coxon, it, really accordions there, as you can see how close Coxon was to both cars there. C team is in sixth. Seventh is, uh, G is Giovanni Centurami. We were just looking at that. Kirsten is solidly eighth. Bouchard is keeping himself in front of Luke Rosella really well. Uh, and then we have Lewis Wedding. This is his first race I mentioned for ISO, and he's driving the uh, Brabham BT60Y. An unusual car. It has, kind of, it, it has a pointed nose that's up a little bit. An elliptical uh, airbox. Interesting car to look at, but not necessarily the fastest. 
But uh, we'll see how he does towards the end of this race. Uh, if he keeps his nose clean, he may be in line for some points. The 11th place in this car is pretty good. Looking further back, Peter Hlavich, Mike Olsen, Robin DeVos. Oh, Johnny Aces is in 15th place now. He is up six spots from the start, which is excellent. Let's ride with him for a little bit in his Kalani. He actually has a yoke steering wheel there. Interesting. Different from a lot of other cars. Probably so that he can see the uh, tachometer. If that was a complete wheel, the, the there would be what we call him the industry rim block. Heading up the hill now. That's an older spec Ford engine. It's not the HB one that the Benetton and Jordan teams are using. And here's Dave Miller in a guest appearance for a Ligier Lamborghini, a, a car that sounds fantastic but from a handling point of view. It was probably a real uh, difficult car to drive. Kim McKeels also soldiering on in the uh, Fond Mattel. Fond Mattel, a, a, a company that made uh, wheels for a lot of the F1 teams. And Chacon 18th, 19th is Del Piccolo. And 20th, Luciano Rosa. Jill Toe is in the garage. I wonder what happened here. Oh, well, I'm not sure. Yeah, this is, I'm looking further back in the replay. I can't see, but for whatever reason, he's out of the race. And uh, Sabre also out of the race. Not sure what happened there. That's not going to be uh, popular with the Tifosi. Yuha and Brian Janik are both in the pits uh, for some reason with repairs. So they, it must have been some kind of incident uh, that happened with these two. But Sabre definitely is out of the race because his car is in the garage. But man, that is really too much because they're, they're just going to be sitting there for a long, long time as the cars circulate. Anyway, back to the front. Grant Riddall in the lead. Now by, uh, how many seconds by? Almost, uh, just 15 seconds on the clock there, but it, uh, let's see. Yeah, that's about how far he is away from, uh, from Ray. He's coming up to lap Del Piccolo now. As you can see, we have two cars in the pits getting repairs. Yuha Boss and, uh, Brian Janik, so one would have to assume contact in that situation. There's Del Piccolo. Okay. The yellow light there is, is not for any crash on this straight. It's just for people in the pits because of the close proximity. Here is Ray Riddall. Oh, and here's uh, Brian Janik just exiting the pits. So he's going to make room here. We're going to have to make room for these cars. He makes room for Ray. It's going to be hard for him to make room for everybody. He's doing his best. down to the Mirabeau once again. Janik on the uh, left there doing his best to stay out of the way. Ray, Ray Riddall still in second place. Chopinski is in third. And Richard Cox in fourth. Anders Nilsson fifth. Giovanni Centurami is in sixth. So it'll be interesting to see Eventually, there's going to be a pit stop, I would think, for everybody, but uh, this is a uh, interesting situation here. Slipinski's keeping pace with Ray Riddall and looking for a way around him. A little further back, similar situation with uh, Cox and, and uh, Andrews Nilsson. Very, very close. You see how close they come to the Armco barrier there. It's so easy. If you're off by just a little bit, that means you lose a wheel and you're out of the race. You don't even want to, I mean, you could glance one of these barriers slightly and still be okay uh, to some degree, but, but eventually you're going to accumulate damage and then you won't be able to drive the car anymore. It'll be, it'll just handle awful. In any case, uh, what's going on up here? Let's look a little further back. It's pretty spread out further back, but uh, in any case... Okay, here's an interesting battle. This is a, uh, oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, this is not a battle. This is uh, Luciano Rosa's a lap down to, uh, or, or actually is a lap ahead of Janik at this point. So Janik's not in contest here. Plavic is out of the race. So that's very unfortunate. Not sure what happened there. 
Yeah, it happened too far back. I'm thinking there's going to be a lot of that in this uh, race. Only two sets of eyes on the monitors, so I'm not going to get everything. So I'll, I'm doing my very best, but uh, I'm sure you're all aware of that. And then, uh, yeah, but you'll notice now that certain people are moving up the chart wouldn't otherwise. Asiklith is now 14th. 15th is Dave Miller. And then you have KO in 16th. So as attrition takes hold, we might see some names move up the chart that are not typical of being there at, say, an Imola or a uh, or an Interlagos. So it's, it's a golden opportunity for some drivers who have l lesser cars to do well if they just happen to do well at Monaco. Some drivers just come alive at certain circuits. They just really love uh, the the uh, pacing of the street circuit. There are a lot of drivers who actually really like street circuits who like them a lot. Uh, Emerson Fittipaldi was one of them. Seem to have a real good, real affinity for tracks like that, which are highly technical. And that can make a, make a big, and that can make a big difference if you're a driver who has a lowly uh, or not so good car. Here's Grant. Oh, looks like he uh, took took a bit of a big bite from the uh, curb that time. Let's have another look. Ah, no, it's all right. He's fine. All right, coming up on the uh, Fomat car, which he's already probably passed. Now that I go to live shot. Uh, no, not yet, but uh, won't be very long. And Grant now leads his dad by... 15.5 seconds. Slapinski following him. It is third. Coxon fourth. Fifth is Nilsson. Sixth is Centurami. Seventh is Team. Eighth, Kirsten. Ninth, Luke Rosella. And tenth is, is uh, Lewis Wedding. So he's made up one spot here. He is now in the top ten. So a great uh, performance so far from Lewis. Weaving that Brabham through the Armco barriers. So we'll see where he ends up at the end of the day. He's having a good race so far. Driving with those Pirelli tires, uh, which perform differently from the Goodyears. They tend to wear uh, faster, but they have a grippier uh, nature at the start of the race versus the uh, Goodyear. The Goodyears uh, go off more gradually. Yeah, at the front, it's pretty much the same here. So, so Pinsky, I think is content to just hold station right now and uh, study Ray Radal, but uh, we'll see what happens uh, as the race unfolds here. Pretty, I mean, it's very close at the front here, but not as close to the point where there are battles going on. Looks like uh, Luke Rosella is closing now on Nicholas Kirsten. There's another car with a yoke steering wheel. We got a report from the uh, pit lane that Peter Hlavich actually is out of the race due to an engine problem. So that's going to be interesting. Well, it's unfortunate for him, but it's good information for Luke Rosella. Not that I'm on his radio, but uh, sounds like the uh, Porsche engine that he is running, despite that VIN plate they're saying footwork Ford, um, needs to be treated with care around a circuit like this. So. One of the footwork Porsches out already in the name of Peter Klavic. Luke seems to be doing okay. We'll have to keep an eye on him. Oh, no! Oh! Coxon's out of the race. He just impacted the wall at Portier. My goodness. Here's a replay. What happened? We'll look at it from on board. And I've actually crashed there before, so I know what that feels like at Poitiers. Turns here, and I, I don't know what happened there. He just It looked like he just lost the back end or something. Let's look at it again from outside. Oh, I see what happened. I see what happened. He impacted the wall going into Poitiers right there. Right there is where it happened, and it sent him into the barrier. 
and Nilsson loses a wing. Now, Coxon's obviously out of the race, but Nilsson uh, might have to come in. Well, no, he's going to have to come in uh, to fix that uh, wing. So where is Nilsson? He's probably heading for the pit lane as we speak. I'm sure he's just dropping through. Oh, there's actually some damage now in the back of Yuha's car. I didn't see that before. But uh, definitely some repairs are going to have to be done by the uh, Jordan Ford team. Well, that's really unfortunate because it takes uh, one of the championship leaders out of the race, and it also takes uh, Cox out of the race. I'm, I'm guessing this, uh, this is a race that he's going to want to forget after uh, his qualifying situation and, and exiting so quickly, so that's too bad. Ray has still got Schlepinski in his back now, and Sinterami now is all the way up to fourth because of that attrition. Fifth is John Team. Sixth is Kirsten. Seventh is Luke Rosella. So Luke Rosella is in another opportunity to get into the points here as he is right behind Nicholas Kirsten. You recall that he had a really scintillating battle for a points-paying position at Imola. So this could be an interesting situation brewing right here. Uh, eighth now, uh, thanks to the uh, attrition, is Lewis Weddings. So he's moved up two spaces more. Mike Olson is ninth. Guess good for him. Tenth is uh, Jules Bouchard. So people starting to rise to the top here as the attrition takes hold. You just hope that it's not you. And that is a lot of what racing is. Taking advantage of other people's problems. Uh, and it doesn't, doesn't make you any less of a racer. It just means that you're an opportunist. Seneca said that luck is what happens when opportunity meets preparation. Or I think it was the other way around. Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. In any case, same result. Uh, and that's definitely a, a situation a lot of people are going to be in today at Monaco. Yeah, take a look at this. Luke Rosella now right on the back of Kirsten. He, no he realizes the situation. He realizes he's only one place out of the points. Uh, Alberto always loved to tell me that uh, the two places in a race that are most fought for in a Grand Prix are for third place because that's the last step in the podium and sixth place because it's the last points paying position. <laughs> so. But Luke definitely is charging. He's trying to put some pressure on Nicholas Kirsten here. Whether he's going, whether Nicholas is going to succumb to it, we don't know. Into the tunnel. Lewis Wedding is closed up on this group, so it's going to be—it's a, a three-car battle now. It appears. Yeah, quickly it's going to become a three-car battle. Ford and that uh, Porsche engine seem pretty evenly matched in terms of acceleration, so we'll have to see what happens here. Uh, Lewis is driving with that very heavy Yamaha V12, which is going to be difficult to uh, drag around this uh, circuit, I'm sure. Luke getting closer as they come down to Mirabeau. Not close enough to make a move yet, but he's definitely right there. Look at him put his uh, right front right up on the uh, curbing there right together now in the uh, hairpin. Heading downhill here. This is where uh, Coxon had his accident. But uh, of all the races that we have at ISO, I mean, the, the race that we put a lot of emphasis on and we, we talk about a lot, obviously, is the Indianapolis 500 that we run every May. But if there were another race that had similar prestige, it would be this one. It's, uh, it's a... Im oh my goodness, Luke uh, impacted the wall there slightly. Hopefully he's in damage the car. Up to Raskas now. Let's see what happens under acceleration here. I think, oh, he missed a shift there a little bit.
Very good through uh, Sandovat. Through the Massene. Now this Casino Square turn. Yeah, Luke looks like he's... He, I don't know if he's being held up by Kirsten, but as long as he doesn't get desperate, I think he might be able to get by at a, at a certain point here. Santorami is actually pretty far back from uh, uh, Schlepinski. Schlepinski starting to close in more on Ray Bredal again after that uh, incident behind him. So we'll see. I, I, we don't really know, obviously, what the pit stop strategy is of any of these drivers, but I would imagine, I mean, it's lap 21. So maybe in another 15 laps, we'll see them come into the pits. But in any case, uh, Sometimes people come in sooner because they can run softer tires in the second stint because of the lesser fuel load. But uh, that is actually one thing that's uh, unique about Monaco. We mentioned it. It was in Coxon's notes to start the race. Uh, the fuel amount that they're going to be carrying on board in this race is much, much less because the distance is less and uh, you're not going to be running at super high speed all the time. So that's something to keep in mind. That'll affect how well the cars handle, for sure. A car that runs with less fuel is inherently going to handle better in most cases. That Ferrari engine sounds amazing. So now we can see that Ray is kind of getting away from him. So it's this is kind of seesawing back and forth here. The distance between Schlepinski and Ray Rudol. The distance between the leader and, and Ray Rudol is now 22 seconds. 22 whole seconds. So uh, Grant's got the bit between his teeth, obviously. And he's just got to keep reeling off fast laps and keeping his nose clean as best he can. And uh, the problem with uh, Grant, I mean, no, no, no disrespect to him at all, but he's a guy who's absolutely just, he has two, two settings, on and off, and he's just in incredibly fast. He reminds me of Michael Andretti in that he's either leading the race all the time or not in the race. He's out. So we'll see if he's able to bring that uh, Delara to the finish line first this time. Is uh, you can never count your chickens with uh, Grant in a lot of cases. But in any case, this is the view from Slapinski's car as he's looking at uh, Ray Rudol. Look a little further back here. Centurami in fourth. Team in fifth. Kirsten. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, Lewis Wedding is getting very close to this battle now. It is now a three-car battle between Nicholas Kirsten, Luke Rosella, and Lewis Wedding. And Olsen's closing in on this, too. Olsen's not far behind. He's in ninth. So this is the hottest uh, situation on the circuit this minute as we hop on board with Lewis Wedding in his Brabham. Through the tunnel. Downshifting now for the Nouvelle Chicane. Very awkward. But very good race from Lewis so far. Very, very good. Looks like we got, I mean, we're always happy when new blood comes in the door, but uh, looks like Lewis uh, has a pretty good handle on uh, this car and uh, bodes well for his future uh, races he's gonna run into the Rascas. Accelerating out now into Anthony No. You notice that sign there that's pointing back to the left tells you where, where to go to get to Nice <laughs> in France. Monaco is a, a small patch of land that's right in the Mediterranean, close to the border with Italy, not on the border. It's bordered on all sides by France. You can actually climb up into the hills above Monaco, and you can physically see, with the naked eye, three countries at once. France, Monaco, and Italy. Look at how close they are now, goodness. Lewis is doing the technically smart thing here. He's not really engaging 
Luke in anything because he knows that if he gets past Luke, he's just going to be stuck between these two cars. So, better to watch points at the moment. Might be what he's thinking. But these two are really going at it. Radio antenna is almost like crosshairs <laughs> for uh, for Luke Rosella, but he's uh, he's got his eyes set on that uh, Larousse in front of him of Nicholas Kirsten into Lares Cas Anthony No now on the main straight once again past the Royal Box to Sandoval. Now they're pretty even up here, but. Uh, It'll be interesting to see what happens when pit stops come along, because that's going to jumble things a little bit, probably. And that may be where some of the races won or lost. It'll also depend on who chooses the right tires uh, to finish out the race. Pressure might be getting to Nicholas. He, he started to lock up his tires there. Yeah, he's locking them up again. Actually, he's doing that frequently. Now there's uh, K.O. McKeels in front of them there. He's, he's going to be lapped. So, look at how... Close. Luke Rizzello comes to the Armco there. It's, oh, look at this! He's looking alongside him now. Well, not quite alongside, but it looks like uh, Kirsten got a, a slow exit there from that corner. And now, Luke looking alongside him here, but in the wrong spot. No, he's not going to be able to get by there. But uh, Luke is definitely ready for anything that might happen to uh, Kirsten. He was, he was absolutely ready to pounce there. It looks as if Luke might have just exited that corner a bit slower than he had the past few laps. And... Roselli was right there, ready to take advantage of it. But just didn't quite have the uh, space he needed to get the job done. Very interesting action here. And Olsen is holding station back there, waiting for something to happen. At the front, it's still the same. Grant's leading. Ray Rodol second, Schlepinski third, Centurami fourth. Oh, no! And that is a blow-up from uh, Mike Olsen. A huge fireball, actually. And he is out of the race. My goodness. Well, there's an engine failure of the highest magnitude. Um, too bad for Mike, because uh, he was having a very, very good run. Now, here comes K.O., so Kirsten's got to find a way to get by. And Rosella is ready for anything here. He's, he's actually, he's got his nose right up the gearbox of Nicholas Kirsten's car. He's just waiting for the opportunity to, to happen that will put him into the points. And Kirsten desperately wants to get by, dispense with uh, K.O. McKeels here so he can put some distance between himself and Luke Rosella. Right close together at an idle speed, practically. A little bit of uh, uh, opposite lock there from Luke as they exit. Uh, there. And now, here we go. They're going by on the outside, and KO is making room. Good for him. Doesn't want to become a part of this battle unwittingly. Into Sandovot. But uh, Luke managed to slip through at the same time, so that keeps the battle going. Wedding's dropped it back a little bit here. But still in eighth place. And Johnny Asus is up to twelfth now in his uh, Kalani. Wouldn't be surprised if he's there at the end with a chance to score some points just because he's a very clean driver and uh, he would take advantage of uh, having a uh, lesser car at a circuit like this.
So Nilsson is on the track still, and he's 16th. I mean, it pretty much kills any chance he has, obviously, of winning, but he probably won't score any points either. So it's, uh, from the point of view of Ray Radal, that's uh, advantageous because they're locked in a battle at the top of the points chart. Osha, 17th. And the last card of the race is uh, Olsen. And then Janik and... Uh, boss are running it very back because of the incident they had earlier which we did not catch and there goes Grant he's into the pits now this will be his lone pit stop up goes the car there he goes out of the pits now, here's the thing, entering the track, yeah, he's got to be very careful about that. So, he, able, he was able to make his pit stop and still maintain the lead. That's how uh, good his uh, situation was. He's now only four seconds in front of Ray, but that gives you an idea of Grant's dominance. He was able to come in, make his pit stop, and continue. So, he made his pit stop at lap 28. The question now is when will the rest of these guys come in? It's still the same at the front here. Team's not in a battle for position here. These are just cars that are lapped down. But it's definitely going to be interesting with this group when they decide to come in. 6th, uh, 7th, and 8th. Because it could have a huge impact on, on how they do in the rest of the race, where they come out of the pits. So Ray has actually got a little bit of a cushion between himself and... Uh, Schlepinski now, it's about two seconds. So that's good for him. He's, he's, uh, he's obviously going to lose places when he goes in to uh, make his stop. He just didn't have the, uh, uh, Grant was, it built up enough of a, oh no, there's Grant! Grant is against the wall, out of the race, blown engine it appears. Oh no! No, wait a minute. His engine's, his engine is still running, so I wonder what happened here. He's against the wall. I, it really boggles my mind why he's not going. Could, have been a, could have this be a hardware error on his part? Something to do with the wheel or the pedals or something? I don't know, but it's just inexplicable. Uh, he's just against the wall. I'm not sure what happened here. He's just, yeah, he's just sitting there. But this is disastrous. He's already down to eighth place. My guess is that there's something wrong with his wheel or pedals, something in that area. And now he's out of the race. So that's the end of the race for Grant Rudolph. Right after he had made his pit stop, that's just, that's really rotten luck. My guess is it was something other than the game itself, something other than the server, something to do with his equipment uh, failed. So, but we won't really know until he says something on, on YouTube or says something on the forum, but that is just really too bad. And that changes things a lot again. So Ray is now in the lead. So he's on a, in a position here with Slipinski in second place. These two have yet to pit. Slipinski almost given new life by this. He's like charging at the back of uh, Ray now. Centurami, the other Delara, is in third. Uh, fourth is John Team. Fifth, Luke Rosella. Luke Rosella is now in the top five. And sixth, but missing a front wing that's disastrous, is Lewis Wedding. He was having such a good race, and now he's going to have to come to pits and get that fixed. Now, the, the good news is that he's making the stop at about the time that he would make his pit stop, but still, uh, and also, Johnny, Johnny Ace is there, is, is missing a wing. So we've got a couple of people who need some service in the uh, pit lane. So he's trying to, oh my goodness, you are! Yuha has spun out in front of this group, and he is staying stationary until he has the opportunity to make a three-point turn here. Oh, he bangs the car in the, into the barrier there. That bent wing is actually from before. It didn't just happen now. But good grief. Lots of things happening all of a sudden. And Bouchard has lost a wing. So several people doing the pits for lengthy uh, repairs. They didn't want to be there, but uh, that's probably what's going to happen. Here's Lew Lewis Wedding. He's going to be coming into the pits now, uh, obviously, to fix that wing, but also change tires. Bouchard's going to do the same thing. The leader is now Ray Rodolph after the uh, 
DNF of uh, Grant. Uh, Cesare Slipinski is second. Zenjirami third. John Team fourth. Luke Rosella fifth. Robin DeVos is in sixth. Seventh is uh, Bouchard, who we're looking at now, and he's making his stop. Obviously going to be longer than he wanted because he has to uh, have the front wing put back on him, which has already happened, but that's going to take a long time. Behind him is, is Johnny Aces. He's also getting his front wing attended to. So the question becomes, th these two have not yet pitted. Uh, Ray Redall, our leader, who inherited the lead from Grant once uh, his car stopped for some reason. Kale McKill is out of the race, apparently had a collision with uh, Kirsten, the lone uh, LaRousse, which uh, would seem to indicate to me that maybe uh, there'd be an issue with uh, Nicholas Kirsten's car. Let's see how he's doing. I don't see him. Yes, Nicholas Kirsten is out of the race, so that was a, con a collision that did occur with... So Robin DeVos is sixth now as these pit stops are occurring, and Dave Miller's up to seventh in the uh, Ligier Lamborghini of all cars. Uh, and then De and, and look at this, uh, Gabriel Del Piccolo, who was way, way back in the field, is now eighth. Anders is ninth. Jules is making the stop to fix his... Oh, and Lewis Wedding is now coming out of the pits in tenth place. So he didn't lose too much track position, but he lost a lot of time. So he's going to have a... A lot of effort he's going to have to put in to make that up. And Bouchard's still in the pits getting his uh, wing fixed. Johnny Ace has since left and he's down to 13th. So it shows you how dramatic things can change here. Or how quickly things can uh, change in a matter of just seconds. We weren't expecting what happened to Grant Riddall. We weren't expecting what happened to Richard Coxon. But... Uh, that is the nature of racing on a circuit like this. Things happen. Uh, sometimes good fortune, sometimes bad. But uh, So Slapinski here seeing the opportunity. He was my pick to win. So uh, we'll see if he can go one better here and make a, make a fortune teller out of me. But... Uh, here they come into the Nouvelle Chicane. They're, they're about as close together as they've been all race. Uh, Nine-tenths of a second, in fact. One-tenth one now as I go through here through the swimming pool. That's going to accordion back and forth. But uh, this is a, an excellent opportunity for Ray here. His main competition uh, in points is in ninth place. Uh, and he's leading. So there's a possibility he could leave this race with maximum points and his nearest pursuer would have none. So Coxon's also out of the race and he was, I believe, in third in the points. Let me have a look here. Yes, he is. So uh, there's a chance here for Ray to vault himself into the lead if things go well for him today. We'll see what happens. Oh boy, K.O. McKeels with the dad jokes again. Yeah, actually, it's not the best day at this point for Lewis Wedding, but hopefully he's able to uh, bounce back from that losing that wing. We didn't see what physically happened. But uh, a bunch of people seem to lose their wings at once. I, I, it's almost as if they were tied together. I, no way to really know. And, uh, Ray is doing an excellent job here holding the lead. Not getting flustered at all by the uh, presence of a howling Ferrari engine behind him. Oh, Luke Rosella out of the race. What happened here? And it, it is too far back really to, to tell. That's too bad because he was in fifth place in the points and now Luke is out of the race. That's really unfortunate. My goodness. Dave Miller now up to sixth place in the points with the Liget Lamborghini that quite frankly I'm surprised would score any points anywhere but uh, but there he is in sixth 
Papa DeVos is in fifth in the Lotus. Nilsson uh, actually unlapping himself there. Nilsson at this point is probably going faster than some of the people who are ahead of him on the track. Now that he's had his uh, repairs, Nilsson now in eighth. That's because of uh, the uh, Luke Rosella DNF. John Team in fourth. Oh my goodness! Uh, there's something happened back here. Looked like an accident. One of the low tie, I believe. Who was it? Was it? Uh, it looked like it could have been Brian Janik. Let's look at that again. Yes, uh, Brian spins, but very fortunate to keep it off the wall. And he had a good chance to get back going here again. Didn't really get in the way of uh, uh, Miller there, but uh, thankfully able to keep the thing going. There is actually a battle for position right there between Luciano Rocha and uh, Johnny Aces, and that was Rocha just taking 11th place. Immediately in front of them is 10th place Bruno Chacon. So this is interesting. Rocha trying to move up into the top 10. At the front, Ray Riddall is in the lead, Slipinski second, Centurami third, John Team fourth, Robin DeVos is Look at this! <laughs> right by in the outside goes Luke, uh, goes uh, Luciano Rocha into 10th place. Lewis Wedding now in 9th, so yeah, he didn't lose a lot of drive. He didn't lose a lot of track position, but uh, it's going to be hard to get that back. The, the real question is, will Anders Nilsson be able to get back into points because of the, he's in a tight battle with uh, Ray Riddall at the top of the points chart? Del Piccolo uh, in seventh in the AJS is a pretty interesting story, too. I, I said before, he was way down the list uh, on the uh, in, in positions, and now suddenly he's up into the top ten. Robin DeVos doing an excellent job in the Lotus here. That's the Lotus uh, 102B. Team in fourth. Centurami third. Centurami seems to really be comfortable in third place. He always seems to be about there when we watch races. I don't know. It's only been three races, but it seems to be a familiar sight to me at this point. So how is the front battle going here? It's about... A, a, it's kind of accordioning back and forth but eventually the one of these two is going to go into the pits or maybe both of them will go in at once but uh, this is the battle for the lead here between Ray Radal in the Williams Renault and Schlepinski in the Minardi Ferrari So the question is, when are these two going to pit? I don't know. No wrench uh, icons to see on either car. That's the telltale that tells you they're going to pit. Sometimes those snap on, though, uh, automatically, and they don't really mean anything. But uh, I, had a, I had a hunch that Cesarius would do well in this race. And uh, Ray, obviously, getting on with uh, the program in that Williams or no. Centurami is in a very solid third place, meaning there's lots of room in front of him and lots of room behind him. So, and John Team doing another excellent race for Leighton House in fourth. Robin DeVos in fifth. These guys are all kind of spread out in third through fifth. Miller in sixth. Well, Piccolo seventh. Eighth, Nilsson. Ninth, Lewis Wedding, and it appears that there, there might be a problem in the tunnel there. Oh, Lewis. 
having trouble getting around the, uh, uh-oh, what's going on here? It looks like there was a, uh, did someone spin there? No, everything, everything, oh, no, 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 that, that was, uh, Bruno Chacon, or was it? No, it was Boss, it was Yuha Boss. He has spun out in the swimming pool at Complex, actually just after Tobacconist. He's looking for a way to get turned around here and get in. Oh, man, man he's, he's in a Austin Powers uh, situation. He's, he's trying to, to okay, he's going to have to go to the pits for, let's see what uh, physically transpired here to put him in the position he was in. This has not been the best race for you, huh? He's had some issues early on in the race. And again, here he, we, you saw his bent wing and here he is again. So my guess is he lost the rear wing. He didn't lose it at the tobacconist. Did he lose it at Nouvelle Chicane? Yes, he did. There it is. So, okay, so here he is exiting Nouvelle Chicane. What happened? Uh, that little, he, 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 just too much power and it looked like he, when he clip, oh, and then he backs up and loses the wing. So that's what happened. And he's in the pits. John team also in the pits, but that's a routine stop uh, for uh, John, I would assume. He's probably going to be exiting uh, in, a, in a mere matter of seconds. There he goes, new tires, and he's out of here. Yeah, but poor Yuha is going to wait for a long time to get that uh, car fixed. battle here between, uh, this is an interesting battle here, between Bouchard, uh, Bruno Shotgun, and then Johnny Aces, who looks up the inside, oh, is he gonna get him? No! Can't get alongside Shotgun for 12th, very close, but just didn't quite get alongside. Okay, but it doesn't matter because Shotgun is due to go into the pits, you can tell by the wrench icon there. Eventually, he's going to head into the pits, and that will advance Asterklin to 12th, but he's still got to pit himself, I would think. I wonder if anybody is actually thinking about going the race with no stops at all. I would think that that would just make you too slow. If the tires were... Yeah, there he goes into the pits. Bouchard in 11th, Roche of 10th, Lewis Wett in 9th. And that actually, John didn't lose any track position at all. He's still fourth. More cars in the uh, pits. But not the leader. The leader continues along with uh, Schlepinski at the back. So really, it's going to come down to when do these two pit and how fast the pit stops are. Another lap starting now, lap 41. So we're way past the uh, midway point, not way past, we're just past it. Oh man, uh, Schlepinski took kind of an odd line there through Massonet, but he's okay. Um, seems to have a bit of a head of steam here. Maybe he's gonna try an overtake, I don't know, but this is the closest he's been to uh, Ray were at all throughout the race. I, I can't recall in this is when they were closer, maybe at the start. But uh, interesting to see, uh, you know, this close to a pit stop, too. I don't know whether it's wise to engage in a battle now on track. Maybe better to wait until you take your pit stop and then go for it. And through the Chicane. Good evening. Oh, it's you, huh? Uh, so you chose to uh, just park the thing? Well, I did some quick maths, and the next repair would meet another five laps down, so ineligible for points. Okay, well... 
Very having stopping, said that, right? well, we're sorry to see you out of the race, but Slipinski has just taken the lead in his uh, Minardi Ferrari because the uh, uh, first, place car, first place car of Ray Rudall is in the pits, taking his uh, pit stop, and he's also lost uh, second place to uh, Santorami, so uh, God, it's taken a long time here. This is a long pit stop. Yeah, maybe that's some damage that needs to be prepared. Maybe. Yeah, you got to turn the damage thing off before you go into pits. Otherwise, the crew will be spit shining the car while you're losing time. So there goes uh, Ray back onto the track in third place. So he lost two positions. Centurami's in second, and the lead is uh, Schlepinski. I, I uh, predicted Schlepinski would win this race because of racecraft over uh, machinery, and he seems to be proving it right, at least for now. We'll see how long his pit stop takes if he's able to maintain that lead. He's only two uh, seconds ahead of uh, Centorami at this point, but he hasn't pit yet. So that'll figure into this uh, relatively soon. So what, what kind of a race was it for you? It looked like it was pretty eventful, but not in the way you would like. I could use also the words to qualify, but I think it wouldn't get through censorship. Oh, uh, well, we, we want to we have a family program, so. Yeah, so I'll put it politely. I got a bit botched at the start. Uh, I then spun around all by myself early on. We joined in a dodgy way because I couldn't see oncoming traffic, so oh, I had geez. to get out of it. That's the worst when you when you can't uh, see anything. Yeah, so I might have annoyed someone with it, and then I got stuck behind Brian and Janik, who did his best to make the lot as white as he could. And mm. once I got a run up him, he was in front of me, and I misjudged it and ran into him. I'll have to look at the replay to see what exactly happened. I think the blame's on me. Well, and uh, any... that cost me four laps, and then by then the car was gone. So. Hmm. Well, we're so we're sorry to see that you're out of the race. Uh, the uh, it has been an interesting race, though. Uh, we've had uh, some pretty uh, interesting uh, battles uh, throughout the the uh, top ten, and even some down into the teens. A lot of drivers, as you would imagine, have been taking advantage of attrition and moving up the chart. Uh, some drivers who had great drives on the plate just ended up losing them uh, because of uh, just yeah. errors and here and there. I mean, Cox in the most notable one. He had an accident at uh, Poitiers that also t uh, caused uh, an incident with uh, Anders Nilsson. So, and then I'm not sure what happened to Grant Rudolph. He pulled the uh, He posted on the forum he had a black screen. Okay, that would explain it because he came to a complete stop at, yes. uh, at the... Uh, in at the, the harbor. At oh, the, the swimming, uh, pool. swimming pool. And it looked as if he was moving his wheels back and forth. He, his engine was still running. And he was trying to... It was obvious it was a hardware error of some kind. Or some, you know, it wasn't the car. Something actually at the source where he was driving was the issue. So... And Schlepinski has the wrench icon, so he is coming into the pits on this lap. Okay, I don't... You said Center Army has not pitted yet. No, he has uh, not. That can be interesting, because we're only... Already, sorry, way past half race. No, not way past, I'm just... Look. Interesting. He has not pit to my knowledge. Well, like, uh, Center Army... I'll, I'll check with the lap yeah, times. Ch check probably. the lap times and see. You could because that would give us the answer. No, they're all they're all nicely flowing. There's no no slow lap in between. Nope. So there you go. Mm -hmm. you, nope, it stopped. I would I would find it odd that someone would actually use the strategy of not pitting in this race as Schlepinski now enters the pit lane. Oh, you're good if you're kind enough to your tires and you not good rallies. Yeah, these are good. C's going on the car. C compound. C's, C's. Yep, matching his name. Uh, is Ray going to get uh, his second place back? It doesn't look like it. He's too far back. His his was a long pit stop, actually. This illustrates why. He's still in the swimming pool complex while Slipinski is uh, exiting. Exit. Yeah. yeah, so that was... Uh, so Slipinski now down to second place. So the question now is when will Centurami pit and how long will it take? 
Well, whatever it takes, you'll, you'll learn. Well, it's gonna, you'll, he's uh, put the wrench icon on. Okay, so he is coming no, in. Not, you, you've got your answer. I think that'll put him behind Slapinski again. Yeah, probably. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, may, maybe an undercut would have been a more interesting choice. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Centurami eventually wins in this car uh, at a, one of the circuits. He's consistently quick. He's a very good uh, teammate to uh, Grant Riddall. They're both very quick in these cars. But I would not be surprised if he finally coaxes this thing into, uh, well, there is no victory circle in F1, but, it, you know, no. on, under the top of the podium, shall we say. Well, if, if he has a quick stop and he can end up in front of Slapinski, it'd be interesting. All right. Okay. In, I'll time the stop for you. Oh. In the pits now, Sinatrami stops on the mark. Yep. Uh, looks like bees on bee, them. Yep, bee compound going on. And 12 where? seconds popped. Here comes uh, Slapinski out of Anthony No. It's uh, going to be very close. I uh, uh, think you'll get. Uh, yeah, it's center armor, definitely. Wow. Yeah, but he had to stop because he's, uh, he's yeah. on Pirelli. I mean, that's not. Uh, and I said he was on bees, uh, which for Pirelli translates to. God knows, I cannot see it. Sorry. Well, okay. it's interesting that he took that, that he went that far in one set of Pirellis. That's that surprises me. That too. Well, uh, it's it's mediums. Mediums. All right, now look at this. They're right together here. Uh, Centurami's tires not yet up to temperature, and Schlipinski looking for a way around. So, right here is the battle for uh, the the win of the Monaco Grand Prix. Well, technically, I should say the lead. We're not in the winning mood yet. Uh, all right. So all right. Still 40 laps, no, 30 laps to go. Yeah. Ray is still in third place. Very good drive for him. Uh, that pit stop, though, killed him. Here's uh, actually, okay, this is interesting right here. You've got uh, John Team in fourth. This is, this is not for position, though. Anders Nilsson is now back in the points in sixth place. Yes. So uh, uh, basically, he's, on, uh, he's in a situation where he could score one point and his uh, nearest rival, Ray Radal, would score four. So that doesn't yeah, really I change mean, much. I mean, it, it breaks no. the tie. Oh, but you're it... not off from John. Um, but he's only 27 seconds meant Robin DeVos. So I mm -hmm. think he'll definitely be aiming to, to go for at least two points. Anything above that will be... He has to take over... If he can take a full lap over John team, possibly fourth, but... Well, Slipinski is still right with uh, Centurami, so we should stay right here. This is the best, uh, one of the best oh, battles yeah. on the circuit. It's for the lead. Into the Mirabeau. Now heading down still to the Lowe's hairpin. Left. Oh, a little bit over the curb there. Now down to Poitiers. This is where Coxon had his untimely demise. Uh, just clipped the barrier slightly. Looks like uh, Slipinski had a slow exit there from that corner, so that gives uh, Centurami a little bit of life. A little bit of a lifeline, but... Uh... Well, it seems there was even a battle for last place as Janik's overtaken Chacon. Wow. Yeah, there's... Also, in Chacon had a rather messy exit at the first turn. Well, in a lot of ways, this, this race is one where if you can keep your nose clean and keep doing decent laps, eventually the race will come to you. Yes. It's, it's, it's the kind of race that this is, uh, historically. Yes, and that's what I should have done. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's other, uh, there's other races. We're not, even at the midway, oh, yes. we're not even at the midway point of our uh, 2023, uh, sorry, 2024 uh, season. Still lots of stuff going on. Lots of opportunities. Oh, is that smoke coming from Shandrami's car? Let's have a look here. He might be just be uh, locked. Uh, I saw puff of smoke at the casino. Maybe that was... That maybe, he was maybe he was just breaking? I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. He seems okay. Yeah. All of Gersten now. Yeah, I don't.
don't see any issue there. But uh, And there's a little bit more of a gap now between uh, Slipinski and uh, Centurami. Well, I think Slipinski just took three tenths off it. Yeah. All right, so before things get too crazy here, uh, maybe it's time to do the trivia question. All right. All right, so the trivia question was, who uh, was the first French driver to win the Grand Prix of Monaco? Is it A, Guy Moll, B, Jean-Pierre Beltoise, or C, René Dreyfus? Dreyfus. Wow, you didn't wait. He didn't wait at all for the TikTok to start. You're just gonna go right for him, huh? Yep. Well, the time is up. You've chosen who you want, and the answer is Rene Dreyfus. How do you, is it, are you just a student of Monaco Grand Prix history, or? <laughs> uh, no, but I'm, I'm, I was pretty sure someone that won it before Beltoise. I don't think he more ever won it. Okay. Uh, I'm even starting to doubt if he's French or old GM in my book. Alright, well good job. So Giovanni now that he's got his uh, tires uh, warmed up, he's uh, able to keep a good distance between himself and Schlepinski. So we'll see what happens here. Delara Judd versus a uh, Ferrari. Uh, Powered Minardi. Yeah, and he's, he's reeling him in because the gap's under a second now. Oh, yeah. But Ray is only 14 seconds behind. This could remain very entertaining till the end of the race. Yeah. I hope so, anyway. As they lap Rocha, I think? Or? Yeah, Rocha is, is the uh, car they're lapping here. Uh, actually, Rocha got stuck in between the two of them, so Centurami had a further chance to. Gain yeah. a bit of ground. Now they're uh, heading towards Massenet. Uh Louis Wedding has retired. Oh, that's too bad. Because he was having a good race and he had an issue of yeah. some kind. And, and Jenna to the casino. Going up there. Oh, man. That's too bad because Johnny was, was having a good run. He, uh, he lost his wing at one point, but he was up to 12th. And it looked as if oh. he... Oh, I said Louis. Johnny's still going. Oh, he's still going? Okay, sorry, I mis misheard you. Um, yeah, but L L Louis, Louis Wedding, uh, I don't know how, I, I don't know if he likes it to be pronounced Louis or Louis, but in, in any case, he was having a very good race. Was up yes. into the, uh, was up into the top ten at one point, and, uh... Yeah, he had a very good race in that Brabham. Yeah. Yeah, considering it was a Brabham, I thought he was doing very well. Um... And actually, yeah, Nilsson now fifth, so he's got two points on the plate, which will be good for the uh, championship results, uh, or the, uh, the driver's table. Keep things interesting. And Del Piccolo sixth in that AGS. I don't think we've had any AGS points scored this year so far. So I don't that, think we have. No, so that'll be interesting. I'm not struggling to notice who Anders overtook to get fifth. No. Yeah, because I'm sure I said it's five, ten, five or ten minutes ago. But <laughs> Miller, is Miller is having a good drive in the uh, Ligier Lamborghini. He's seventh right now. He was sixth before. Must have pitted and uh, lost that position. So, but uh, he, he's been driving very good throughout the day and uh, looking really, uh, looking really strong in that car, considering how ill it handles. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm I'm thinking we may have missed the time that Robin DeVos was lying fifth. Oh, um, that was what I was looking for. And he was and he's out of the race now. He's out of the race. Yes, yeah. uh, I think he was in front of Anders Nilsson. Um, Josh Lipinski is bringing the gap down again. 1.2 seconds now. And AJS has not scored any points so far, so this will be their first. Yeah, we got a report. Oh no, actually, oh, this is not good. Uh, Del Piccolo 
has lost his front wing. He's going to have to come in and get that fixed because he can't yeah. even make the turn at the hairpin here without it. Uh, Chaturami half the um, sorry, Slapinski half the gap in one sector. Uh -huh. uh, excitement coming up. I don't know. No Piccolo. No Piccolo actually. Oh. Oh, Del Piccolo really did it at the worst possible point, the last turn. Yeah, now you had to go all the way around. Yeah. Well, uh, news news from uh, from Lewis' uh, wedding. He says, I don't mind being called either Louis or Lewis. Uh, he had a memory leak. Uh, slow, uh, slow, and you know, he got more stutters. He tried to turn his stream off, and it uh, froze. So, oh, uh, so another right. hardware problem. Unfortunately. Um, no, this will bring Dave Miller into the points because Del Piccolo is spitting now. Uh, and Miller is about to pass him. Yep, there goes Miller. He's going to take sixth place. Goes right by uh, Del Piccolo. Del Piccolo getting his rear wing, or sorry, front wing uh, checked yeah. and, uh, and changing tires. Yeah. So, yeah, the so, Miller, Miller is in sixth now. So we go from one French team going for, to its first point to another. Yeah. Uh oh. There's a, a lot of smoke uh, yeah. at Casino. Something went wrong here. I don't know what it was, yeah. but uh, oh, there, it there it is. There it is. Jonathan. It's Johnny Aces. Johnny Aces has had an incident and he is on his way again. Oh, Jonathan crashed into a Lotus going up the hill. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh. I. Oh dear. Let's see what happened here. Here's a replay. He had lost his front wing already. And that was in the Lotus uh, instant, I'm, I'm guessing. But, uh, man, poor Johnny Aces. He's, he's going to have to go to the pits again for repairs. Well, Piccolo's still in the pits. Well, for some reason, Brian Janik was so... Ah, I see. Brian Janik had uh, run into Bruno Chacon. He seems to have issues with Balatons tonight. Not of his own will. Probably hadn't realized he lost his front wing because he continued. And... And going up the hill, his engine... I see, was dying, but no, he just backed off up the hill. Very odd incident. Well, provided a little bit of a gap for... Um... Oh my goodness, yeah, there, there is... Uh... There, there is a Lotus that is uh, slowing down. I'm not sure whether it's uh, Robin. De it, well, it has to be Janik because Robin DeVos Janik, is out of Janik, the race. Janik pitting for a uh, spare of uh, a new wing. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we've seen yeah. a few wings come off in this race. Uh, only one wheel, though, uh, we've seen off of a car. Well, actually, no more. We saw uh, that. We saw it with Coxon, and we saw it with on lap one with. Uh, I believe it was uh, Oscar, Oscar team. team. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I got news of that one. Oh, uh, yeah, I was going to say excitement at the front, but Centurion has opened the gap to two seconds now. Yeah, that was a temporary situation. I think I think he's in a situation where he's got enough in hand where he can yeah, go a little quicker really? if he wants to. And Ray's dropping back. Yeah, he hasn't been able to really assert himself after the pit stop for some, for one reason or another. But uh, I think that, that long pit stop is really what got him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, Coloni is circulating rather slowly. Yeah, he's, he's trying, to, about trying to get out of uh, John's way. He was, he's in fourth. Yeah, no, trying to assess the damage. Yeah, that's the other thing. Rosha. In the Ferrari is only one place out of the points, so we may yet see Ferrari points scored this evening. We don't know uh, what's going to happen in the next. Uh, uh, Del Piccolo has retired. I don't, mm. I don't know if he'd already. Mm. And that's not yes, he's uh, he has retired. Janik is in the pits with the yeah. repairs going on. Coloni still running in ninth. Yeah, so there's still a chance something could transpire there, but uh, time is running short. Yeah, it does look like uh, Centurami's in the superior situation 
with his uh, with his Dallara. Meanwhile, there might have a battle on coming for sixth because Dave Miller has only one point six seconds over Road Roadshop. Excuse, excuse me. Yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah, they're right together actually. Here's a. Uh... Here's the onboard camera from uh, Roche's Ferrari. V12 Duel. Italian V12 Duel at that. Lambo beating against Ferrari. Yeah, two V12s here. Lambo and Ferrari. Yeah, he's got Roche all over him now. Yeah. There he goes. Yeah. Uh, nah, the outside. Go. And he takes sixth place rather easily, I might add. Um, yeah, I think the Ferrari is by far the superior car. Yeah. With sequential gearbox. Um, and Bouchard is only 21 seconds behind Miller. Uh, meanwhile, Jonathan's overshot the chicane. Oh, problems continuing for uh, Jonathan, but he keeps it going and has all the parts and pieces fi affixed to the car. Which is always a good thing around here. Yeah. Well, as in the colony, they don't tend to keep working for very long together. Well. Well, that, I think that was just a case too of, of uh, yeah, I think you're right. Superior car with Rosha uh, getting points, but uh, Jonathan going to pits again. Oh man! So he's got further damage to. Uh, Assess well, he didn't, didn't hit, hit anything, so I wonder what's wrong. Maybe tires, one would suggest, because uh, he's on seas. Is that soft? Uh, Maybe they're already uh, worn down. I don't, I don't. It's hard to believe. Maybe it. I don't, I don't know the Goodyear compounds. So that's. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's only his tire stop. Okay. I gotta say, Anders uh, driving a very good race, considering that he got caught up in uh, Coxon's accident. Uh, yes. Didn't didn't let it get, didn't let it uh, fluster him, and he's still, you know, he's he's on course to score points. Uh, so because he basically was right behind Coxon when he had his accident, and he had nowhere to go. There was no room for him to react, and uh, just ran straight to the back. He was lucky to escape with with all wheels attached to the car. Not so for uh, Coxon, unfortunately. Yeah, Chlapinski just doesn't seem to be making any impression right now. He's just falling further, further back. It's uh, two seconds now, the gap. So it may come down to traffic in the end here. He's overtaking their uh, Bruno Chacon. And Ray's really taking it easy. That gaps up to 12, 20 seconds now, sorry. Yeah, he's, he's basically uh, resigned himself to being third at this point. Might be something with the car, I don't know, but uh, in any case. Yeah, the gap is now three, is coming up to about two and a half seconds between Slipinski and our leader, Ray Radal. I'm sorry, sorry, not Ray Radal. What am I saying? Uh, Giovanni Santorami is our leader in the other. Uh, Oh, uh, Jules Bouchard just crashed at the swim pool. Oh, no. Oh, lost his rear wing and front wing. Rear and front wing now. He's got a Formula Ford. So, let's have a That's look a at it. Ford a... engine. It's appropriate. Yeah. So, what happened here? It looks like on entry. Oh, he glanced off of the barrier entering the swimming pool on the, on the left-hand side. And that sent him into the Armco yeah. on the right-hand side. So, my goodness. That's going to be more than just wings. I mean, he's going to have suspension damage. Uh, so oh, this could be uh, an place gain for the Colony. Could be. Yeah, Johnny Aces, despite everything that he's had to deal with, is ninth on the chart. And yeah, Bouchard obviously in the pits getting the car fixed, so this means Johnny Aces will go up to eighth. Rocha coming up behind him, but that's not for position. Through the swimming pool now. And he 
takes the car very wide to allow Rocha through, but uh, as he heads down the straight here, he's, pr he's probably going to take uh, eighth place. Even getting this car onto the grid is a feat in and of itself, but uh, no, actually, he's not. He's in, in no, he's still a lot behind him. Oh, a lap, okay, he's got a lap to go. Shoot. Yeah. Before he gets uh... him. Yeah, he has to complete this lap and then he'll overtake him. Mm -hmm. uh, just as Bruno has to do a full lap to... to uh... well, Bruno Chacon is nearly a lap behind Jonathan, so he's quite safe there. Yeah. All depends how long they take to fix that, uh, Jordan. And yeah. what they fix. Yeah, the gap to first place still uh, increased. Well, now it's actually going. It was, it's, it was three seconds for a while, then it dropped to two and a half or so. It accordions back and forth, but uh, it does. It definitely. Uh, if Cesarius is going to put together some kind of a late race charge, he's going to start thinking about it at some point here, with about 19 laps to go. Oh, uh, maybe he's, he's banking on. Uh... Giovanni Spirelli's giving up earlier. That's a, that's a good point because uh, Schlepinski is on good years. And uh, he just took full tents back in the final sector, so mm -hmm. still going for it. All right. Ray is really letting things go. 23 seconds behind uh, Schlepinski now. Well, he may be doing the tactically superior thing because we don't know what the engine life is for these drivers. Uh, nope. we, we saw uh, actually Plavich and Olsen leave the race very early with engine problems. Yes. So... Um, and Johnny Ace is at link 8. Okay, so... So we really don't know. It, it's, it depends on if you've taken a good carrier, carrier car and... Uh, don't uh, abuse the, uh, the red line. Oh dear. 2.8 seconds. Oh, Slapinski took a whole second back in that sector. Interesting. So maybe a slight error on the part of Centurami. But yeah, it really, really does. It's a very organic gap. It goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. Yeah. So. We're going to the point where Jonathan is about to lock Bruno Chacon. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Slight difference in equipment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bruno lets him through. Well, the top six are all spread out, but uh, looking fairly good as far as trim goes. Yeah, Johnny Ace is up to eighth now. Chacon is behind him in ninth, and this is a battle for position. Battle for eighth place here. Uh, right? Or is well, there a gap? Oh, no, no, uh, Bruno's a lot behind him. Oh, he is, actually. I'm yeah. seeing it now in the chart. Yeah, he's a lot behind. Dang. I thought we were going to have a Bruno and Johnny Ace's battle. We don't see that too often. Bouchard still in the pits getting repairs because so I knew this was going to be a long stop because he had not only the wings gone but he clouded the barrier really hard. Leaders mm -hmm. coming by just now. Yeah, and um, Slapinski did not take any time back this lap so, in this sector, so. Uh, that's, I'd say Giovanni's well, um, doing a good job, but we're not there yet. Yeah. Here comes Janik. He might be coming into the top ten here. If he's on the snow, he's actually three laps behind uh, tenth place. So he's going to gain one lap back here, but that's all. That's all. Del Piccolo out of 
the race. Yeah, so we now currently have 11 cars still running. Last place car is Brian Janik at the moment. So after this race, uh, we go to... Canada. Canada, that's right. That's in two weeks. We don't have a race next week, so... Two weeks to prepare for that one. Yeah. What do you think will happen there? It's a, it's a really... It, it, it races like a street circuit in some ways, because it's so tight. It does, but at least it has overtaking opportunities. Yeah, it does. Uh, okay, not that many. At least the first turn and the, and the hairpin... Uh, Offer, offer plenty of scope for that and the chicanes if you're a bit more daring. Yeah, okay. true. And then we have another uh, round of the uh, uh, British Touring Car Championship coming up on the 21st of April. Yes, at Snetterton. Oh, that's Snetterton. I was having trouble remembering where it was before. But uh, at Snetterton, okay, good. I've done okay at Snetterton before, so I'll look forward to that one. Sunday, April 21st. First race is at 2000 CEST. Yeah, the gap is now holding steady at like two and a half seconds, so... if it, I guess, you know, you're right. If you're Schlepinski, your strategy is... Those Pirellis. Game. Well, I'm waiting game, and those Pirellis might wear out faster than my Goodyears. That's that's the other uh, thing you're thinking. Yeah, because I can't really see another way unless you really turn your engine uh, engine all the way up, uh, with the risk of it saying goodbye. Uh, And we've got a report from Gabriel Del Piccolo on what happened. It was another hardware situation. Bad stuttering and connection lost. So that's the third one that we've had where it's, some, where it's a connection-related uh, situation or a, a black screen or something like that. So I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the track, the heaviness of the detail. I don't know. But uh, some people having some difficulty maintaining a good connection. I had to turn down the detail before I broadcast, and then I've got a decent CPU here. So, it tells you how much detail there is in this track. Now the gap's up to three seconds. So everybody's pretty spread out right now. We got Jonathan actually is in now in eighth place. So despite all the problems he's had, it's pretty surprising that he's still in the top ten. Well, I'll just see points in the cards if some other people get unlucky. Yeah. Janik in eleventh. He's the last car running on the circuit. Everybody else is out of the race, and Janik is five laps adrift. Of leader, you see, he actually overtakes uh, Jonathan here. He's, he's actually faster than him in that car, but he's several laps behind. So 65 laps to go, or sorry, 65 completed. Uh, yeah, it really is going to come down to, to tires, I think, between these two, but we'll see what happens. I think this is going to be, if John Team can keep his uh, car going, this is going to be one of the best results he's had so far, if not the best. In the uh, Leighton House which is actually a pretty decent car. It's not the fastest car, but it's the chassis is fairly good. The engine is, uh, engine's decent. It's a V10. Ilmore. He's doing a good job keeping his nose clean and driving consistently.
Bouchard back in the track now, and he's 10th at the moment. So. Oh, let's... Two laps behind Bruno, so that, that will be very difficult for him to get anything for that. Yeah. At this point, it's just get the car to the finish <laughs> in, in, with all the parts attached. Now the gap is down to two seconds. So Shlapinski at least stays in contact with uh, with uh, Centurami, but just you know can't just can't seem to reel him in. I think Radal will be happy that he's that, you know that he's going to leave this race with more points uh, than his oh, than, well than his rival too. Uh, uh, you know at the top of the point standings are tied at the moment, but uh, it'll break that tie and put him in first place. Uh, even though he's only finishing third out of the six places he could finish the points. So this is a guest drive for Dave in the uh, Ligier? It is, yes. Yeah. No, I think the team will be pretty satisfied with his performance. Yeah. It sounds lovely with that Lamborghini engine, but uh, difficult it car is, to drive. It, it's not very fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, despite having 12 cylinders, it's not fast. It's, very, it's a very strange situation. There's no tachometer. It just uh, has a light to tell you when to shift, and it tells you what gear you're in. That's about it. Yeah, not a lot of information there. No, I never paid attention to it. Just, yeah. Um, I can only see the cockpit from one sitting. So. <laughs> um, I'll take your word for it. Meanwhile, you look inside at Roche's car. He's got an attack. He's got uh, lap time. He's got uh, from, got a variety from of information. From view, it looks like he's got an attack. So maybe the wheel's hiding it. <laughs> there are a lot of Ferrari flags on this course, so there will be people who'll be happy to see. Uh, one of the Ferraris get to the end and in the points. And the gap at the front is now 1.6 seconds. Okay, that's interesting. They're in the Coming tunnel. Again. They're in the tunnel right now, heading down towards Nouvelle Chicane. Yeah, there he's closed, that's for sure. Yeah, that's another four tenths gone. Okay, now now the question becomes what is the difference here? Is it the Pirelli's going off early? I don't know. Maybe. Possibly. But he is definitely closing. off the win uh, tonight and not only be a good win for him in nine points but it will also uh, be very good for Scuderi Italia in the car points uh, they're in fourth right now with six 
But that would vault them a lot higher, for sure. Uh, no, they're, they're in fourth already, so... No, they're... F no, they're not going to score enough to overtake two. No, so they won't. They won't. Never in fact, they actually will get overtaken by Minardi, which is only one point behind them. Really? Huh. Oh, no, sorry. If, if, if Slapinski overtakes them, obviously. Sorry. So... Generally, they won't... It won't make a difference, but if uh, if Jadrami gets overtaken by um, by Slapinski, even in second place, will mean they get the motor by one place. Mm -hmm. However, if Ray keeps it going, Williams will take over the championship lead from Jordan. I think yes, yes, they will with a single point. Cap up to 1.9 seconds now. Mm -hmm. Everything's a bit spread out except at the front. Yeah, the front's the only place where anybody's really in close contact, and even then it's not that close. But uh, nine laps to go now in the race. So if, uh, if Cesarius has anything left for uh, Centurami, probably now is the time to put the cards on the table. But, uh, Definitely. But the gap... Centurami has been running those ties for quite a while now. Yeah, mm -hmm. so... 1.7 second gap currently. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it ends up... Ooh, nine tenths taken out on Slopinski. Hmm. Surprising. It's going the other way than we'd expect. So, eight laps to go now, it appears. Actually, seven. No, uh, Slapinski is about, um, sorry, Zidram is about to complete 71. Mm -hmm. So, six left to go. And lap traffic ahead, which... Surprisingly, it has not been a big issue for anybody. Uh, people in the, who have been being lapped have, have been really uh, good about getting out of other people's way. There's been very few instances where lap traffic causes issues today. And uh, now suddenly the gap is 1.4 yeah, seconds. Yeah, once again. Like so, a yo-yo. Yeah, it just goes up and down, up and down, so... Drivers wishing to take part in championship, there will be one car free after tonight. Hmm. Always have a go at claiming it. I'm curious where he's actually gaining, because it looks like he. I guess he's gaining in the slow sections of the track, but. Uh... 
then I see like I'm like, oh really pinpoint this is just about everywhere. It's yeah. Sometimes it's tunnels, sometimes it's it's strange. Well, now he's uh, and now Giovanni takes six cents back. Okay, so the car they're closing on is John Team, and that's the fourth place car. He's the last car in the lead lap, actually. Anders, the next car down, is one lap uh, in arrears. So we'll see if uh, Centurami can get around uh, team, but no problem. And then Chacon is, is right ahead of them, too, so... This may uh, play a role here in the in the dying laps of this uh, race. We'll see. There's team. He just got right out of the way for both of them, so he's a non-issue. <laughs> and now they got to overtake Chacon. Looking forward now from Giovanni's car. Uh, the Raskas. And Bruno just gets right out of the way. Is he going to do the same thing for uh, Slipinski? Yes, he will. So again, lap to traffic, not much of an issue today. People being very courteous. Dave Miller just ahead of this group too, so gap staying re relatively the same here with about, uh, they got 74, 75, 76, 77, and 78 to go, so five laps to go. Four and a half, really. Yeah, the gap's down to one, one and a half seconds now again, so seems well, to... They keep, they keep us busy monitoring it yes <laughs> yeah coming up the miller here at rest cast Miller will probably just get right out of the way here. Yep, pulls to the left. Oh, interestingly though, I don't think he's gonna be able to let the. Uh... No, Slipinski. Ah, there, uh, there he is. Yep, Slipinski's got him now. So, slight delay, but not a big one. Once again, This is the part of the race where, you know, you're at, you're at your most vulnerable because you've been racing for almost two hours, and mentally you've got to be very taxed at this point. It's very easy to let a mistake happen uh, when you're just mentally that tired. But, yes. uh, but none of these guys seem to be uh, putting a foot wrong here with only a few laps to go, which is, uh, is great to see. Not that we want them to put a photo. No, on, not that we want to. I'm just saying, you know, it's uh, it's great to see. It's, uh, it speaks to the quality of uh, drivers we have, I think. 
needs a lot closer to Centurami now uh, as they come to the tunnel. Slapinski using last year's uh, the 1990 Ferrari spec engine, V12. And I believe the Judd is a V10 in Cesarami's yes. car. Correct, yes. Oh, and Brian Janik out of the race. Oh. So now we're down to 10 cars. I'll try to find out what happened there. That must have been a very fair, fairly recent development. Or not. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to find out for you what happened there. No, it might have happened a while ago, but uh, he was he was pretty far back at that point. But anyway, he was uh, several laps behind. But everybody, at, once you get past uh, Team and Nilsson, everybody else is on their own lap uh, by themselves. That's how spread out the field is. Uh, I think uh, Brian crashed yeah. at the first turn. Well, that's an easy one Just to crash lo it. Locked up and off he went. Both cars have uh, just lapped uh, Jonathan, so uh, yeah, we have 10 cars still running. One lap, well, just a one lap to go with a 9 10. Yep. Ten cap. So that this looks to be okay for Giovanni. We'll see. Here they come through the start finish area. One lap to go. Ooh, a mid-shift to Cesaris, I think, there. Yeah. Something very noisy, anyway. It's funny how some people make room for that bump after Mirabeau and others don't. Yeah, uh, it gets the engine revs up a bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's what... All right, well, they're right together right now. Gap is seven-tenths of a second. Down to the uh, Nouvelle Chicane for the last time. Not many opportunities left here. They come out of Raskas, Anthony Nog, and then back onto the main straight. And in the end, oh. it's going to be very close, very close. But Centurami. Oh. Eight hundredths of a second. Centurami wins the Grand Prix of Monaco by the smallest of margins. Uh, second place goes to Schlepinski. Ray Ridal is still quite a distance back, actually. He's just now getting to the Mirabeau. But, uh, yeah, it was a lot closer at the end than we thought it would be. But uh, a great result for Centurami and a great result for uh, Schlepinski, too, uh, driving the Minardi. Here comes Ray, who took it off the boil a while ago, uh, decided that it was much better that he preserve the car and, and go for points. Uh, it's very early in the season, but uh, he and... Uh, Nilsson, they're uh, at the very top, and he wants to, wants to, he knows that in order to collect points, to get to finish races. So, smart drive by uh, Ray was leading early on, or sorry, not early on. Early on, it was his son leading, but then he had a hardware issue, and then uh, and then Ray overtook. Uh, Ray took the lead, but uh, had a very, very, very long pit stop, which basically dashed any hopes of victory for him but here he comes out of the Raskas and he's going to take third place in the Williams Renault great result for him 
Uh, and already crossed the line, I believe, is uh, John Team is in fourth. Fifth is, N is Nilsson. He's crossed the line. Sixth is Rocha. That's a great result for him. Seventh, Dave Miller. Great drive in the uh, Lige. Eighth, uh, Johnny Aces, in spite of all the issues he had. Ninth, uh, Bruno Chacon. And the last car running in tenth place was uh, Jules Bouchard. DNFs, uh, Brian Janik, Gabriel Del Piccolo, Robin DeVos, Louis Wedding, Luke Rosella, Yuha Boss, Nicholas Kirsten, Grant Riddall, K.O. McHeels, Mike Olson, Richard Coxon, Peter Hlavich, Jill Toe, David Saber, Francisco Amaral, and Oscar Team. So that was the Monaco Grand Prix, uh, an eventful race, and uh, I think it's going to keep the uh, championship uh, lively, but uh, I think everyone drove pretty well. I mean, there, there, there was some instances of uh, obviously losing wings and stuff, but when people needed to get out of the way and make room for the leaders, they did. So from a quality uh, standpoint, uh, as far as the race goes, I think it rates pretty high. What do you think? Oh yes, it was, it was very exciting. It would be nice if we had more people at finish, but Monaco is always a very demanding one. Mm -hmm. um, I think the finishing rate will obviously be higher in Canada. Uh, yeah, definitely. Bigger margin of error, especially. I'm mm -hmm. um, looking forward to that race, yes. Yeah. All right, the, the, tra the uh, race that you're mentioning is going to be the Molson Grand Prix du Canada at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. That is two weeks uh, from today. Uh, that is uh, around 5 of 16. The race will start at 2000 CEST. And then the following week, we have another uh, British touring car race, DHL International Race Day at Snetterton. It's around 5 of 13. And the race will start at 2000 CET, the first race uh, out of uh, two races. So, all right. Well, Yuha, thanks for jumping in the booth at the end there. That was very You're helpful. Welcome. I appreciate it. And uh, to all of you out there, happy Easter. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, for uh, Yuha, this is Jason White saying so long from Monaco. We'll see you in two weeks at Cirque Gilles Villeneuve. Take care and be safe.